Welcome to Social Elo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God and exposing the devil. Today is January 4th, 2020. Some of you received some incredible prophetic messages last year. You're excited. You probably ran around a room, jumping up in the air, doing backflips, or at least in your mind. And we've been expecting things where at the beginning of the year, things would turn around. But it seems as if all hell has just broken loose. And 2020, with the hope of a bright future that you expected, it seems nothing like what was prophesied. And again, even though today's the fourth, for some of you, you have already given up on your prophecy. So as you could see based on the title of this message, this is about stewarding your prophetic word. Whenever the Lord gives you a prophecy, you can expect the enemy to challenge it. And by the way, for some of you, this is not about you simply receiving a prophecy about something to come. At the beginning of the year, the Lord may have even given you a promotion, a spiritual promotion, but then the enemy shows up to make it seem as if it hasn't happened or if your promotion hasn't given you increased authority. But remember, the enemy is a liar. Satan is a father of lies. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So regarding the prophecy, if you receive a prophecy, say within the last three months, about something coming to pass in 2020, the year is not over, and apart from the enemy's job, what he likes to do is to discourage people. When Jesus told a parable of the sower in Luke 8, he, he spoke about um, when the seeds are scattered, about the birds, which are also representative of the prince of the powers of the air, coming and snatching up those seeds to prevent them from growing. That is how the enemy operates. You receive the prophetic word, and he tries to come and snatch it away. Sometimes he tries to get gets you to give up on it. The Lord had prepared a way for the Israelites to enter into the Promised Land. Those spies went into the Promised Land, and even though they had a word from the Lord to go and possess the land, they had a word from the Lord to go and possess the land. Ten lacked the faith to act upon the word. And also one of the ways the enemy tries bringing discouragement to make 2020 looks like, look like 2019 is where if the Lord tells you to do something and you've already done it before, maybe multiple times, you may be like, but I've already done that. I did it and it didn't work. You have to get out of that mindset. In Judges 20, there was a battle where the Israelites were going against the Benjamites. And the Lord told the Israelites, go ahead. And he even told them initially, send the tribe of Judah. <laughs> it didn't work out well. People actually got killed. They sought the Lord again. The Lord told them, go again. And they lost more people. They lost to the Benjamites. And it's like, but the Lord told me to do it. But on the third time, the Lord told them, go, and this time I'll give them into your hands. For some of you, there are things that you have been pursuing for years. But what the Lord wants you to do is to be still in Him and to know that He's God. There are times he may send you to go get something that you have tried before. Some of you have been trying to get things that the Lord didn't send you to get, and that's why you kept on failing. You may have claimed the Lord told you, told you to do it, but if that wasn't the case, that's also part of the reason why you failed. But there are times when you have tried before, and the Lord saw your faith. But rather than him sending you to go get something, the desires of your heart, he brings the desires of your heart to you. I mentioned about the promotion. We see how David, in 1 Samuel 16, the Lord anointed David as Israel's future king in front of his entire family. Then 1 Samuel 17, there was a battle between the Israelites and the Philistines, and David's father, Jesse, sent him to go check on his eldest brothers. And when he went, one of the first battles he had to face was that he heard people speaking about this Goliath who had been trying to make a mock of the Lord. Everyone was afraid of him. 
For 40 days, no one wanted to fight him to accept the challenge, to include David's bro eldest brother Eliab. But David showed up. Eliab, again, saw that David had been anointed as Israel's future king. And what do you ask him? Basically, what are you doing here? Who do you leave to tend the few sheep? So he's running or trying to put David in his place by telling him that he's a shepherd and he needs to be with the sheep. But the Lord had already anointed him as king. So David had, in a sense, received the promotion or he was on his way to get promoted. But within his own family, he was facing discouragement. But he had to stand on the word of the Lord, knowing that he had been anointed king. David had also been through private battles, facing a bear and a lion. He killed them, and he didn't look at Goliath as being much of a challenge. King Saul also tried discouraging David. There was an issue about Saul wanting him to put on his armor, but David was like, no. So David went into battle with the weapons he was um, accustomed to using. So even though you may be stepping up in your warfare, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to change your weapons. Keep on using what you're proficient with. Those things the Lord used to train you in the secret place. The next battle was against Goliath. And sometimes you can tell the size of your calling by the size of the enemy the devil puts in front of you. So for David, he had to face a, a giant around 9 feet 6 inches tall. That was quite a battle. So one of the things the enemy tries to use to discourage you is by sending opposition, you can say way beyond your pay grade. There was some um, verbal jostling for a while. And it shows that it wasn't just a physical battle, it was also a spiritual battle. And even though David was fighting against Goliath, it was a matter of um, which God was going to prevail. David knew he had been anointed as king, and he was confident that his God could take care of Goliath's God or gods and Goliath. And a part of the Lord fully transitioning you. Sometimes the enemy has been coming to you, and as a part of the transition, the Lord needs to send you into the enemy's camp to dispatch with the enemy. The Philistines felt bold. They had that giant on their side, but the moment David took your Goliath, they started running away, and that emboldened the Israelites to chase after those Philistines. And I've been saying a lot, and I truly need the Holy Spirit to keep me on track with this one, because I actually have a second message, <laughs> which was the first message the Lord gave to me. So do not let enemy come along and steal your prophetic word. Once you've tested the Spirit, and you know it's the Lord, if he said he's going to do something, trust him. Then according with Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22, Isaiah 55, starting verse 8, that he is watching over his words, and those words will accomplish its purpose. Yes, the enemy will try to come along and snatch those words like the birds in Luke 8. We also see how Abraham, the Lord called him in Genesis 12, told him about leaving his family. Abraham did that. And in Genesis 15, the Lord is going to codify that covenant with Abraham. And he told him to make some sacrifices. And even though this was natural, you can also look at it as having spiritual implications. Abraham laid out the sacrifices according to the Lord's specifications to codify that covenant. And he had to fend off the birds. So do not allow anyone to come and kill that prophecy kill your faith sometimes it's people who they know the Lord has said something said something to you some may not and arguably the most dangerous ones are the ones who know the Lord has said something to you but because of jealousy or something else they won't support you they try to pull you back instead of pushing you forward do not allow the enemy to snatch your blessing if the Lord told you something do not get all excited one moment and the next thing you know, we start giving up as soon as some kind of opposition comes. That's what the enemy tries to do. Um, I believe it's Psalm 105, it speaks about Joseph. 
and how the word of the Lord tried him until the time of its fulfillment. A prophecy, especially a big one, is going to come with opposition. The Lord will also use that word to try you, but it doesn't mean the Lord is not going to fulfill his promise. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. You may even have a word like what the Lord spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, saying that not only is he watching over his words, but he's hastening to perform them. So stand on the word of the Lord. Stand on the word of the Lord. And actually an example I used this morning, if the enemy want to come at you with wave and wave of attacks, you're literally standing on the word of the Lord like a surfboard. You're riding the waves. It doesn't matter what enemy throws at you. You're standing on something solid, and that is the word of the Lord. And you're floating on the enemy's wave and wave of attacks. And you're not going to let the enemy push you back. You're going to keep on striving forward to the things the Lord had said. Because one of the things, it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. And by the way, sometimes it, it may not even seem like it's the enemy. But oftentimes when you receive a prophecy, it's like life will just take you in the opposite direction. That's what the Lord said is not going to happen. The Lord is testing your faith. Are you going to give up? Are you going to give up easily? Apart from the thing with the Israelites, they went into Canaan and they saw the sons of Anak and they were giants and they start saying, oh, we look like grasshoppers in their sight. And because of that, suddenly, because the Lord told them to go and possess the promised land and they saw the giants, it's like the Lord's not going to send you into a battle and not going to be with you. So again, if the Lord gave you a promise last year, if the Lord has bestowed upon you a promotion, do not throw those things away. Do not start doubting the Lord just because the enemy threw something at you. One of the things that separated David from the other Israelites wasn't just his willingness to face Goliath. After talking smack for a little bit, David was basically like, enough of this. And David ran towards the giant. That's one of the things about getting promoted. That's one of the things when you're, for example, tired of waiting. And an example is um, Jacob, he had a covenant with Laban to work for seven years for his younger daughter, Rachel. But Laban put a switch on him. And in order to get Rachel, because he had ended up marrying Leah instead, he had to wait a week, that marital week with Leah, and then work, and then he'd be able to marry Rachel but he'd have to work for seven years to keep her. They deceived Jacob into that marriage. Let's just say that Laban had a third daughter. I'm pretty sure that Jacob, after having been deceived the first time, he wasn't going to drink anything. He was going to ensure that the woman he was going to marry was a woman he actually loved, and that was Leah. So likewise, learn from lessons from the past. If the Lord said he's going to do something this year, he's going to do something this year. And there's still a lot of time in the year. But the enemy wants you to abandon the promise from the Lord. We know that Jesus went into his own hometown and he did very few miracles because of their unbelief. So as the Lord has, again, Luke 8, Jesus also said that the seed is the word of God. So whereas the Lord has implanted a word into you, the word of God into you, do not allow the enemy come snatch it up, choke it out, or for you to spit it out. You keep the thing within. You steward that word. If the Lord has given you a promotion, you can expect people to challenge you, especially those who are among you. If he's given you a promise, stand on the promise. So don't worry about the darkness that the enemy tries to bring upon you to make it seem as if the Lord is going to do what he said is going to do or that 2020 is going to be just like 2019. If you know that what you received was from the Lord, a part of what lets you know it was from the Lord is if the enemy comes and challenges it. Why would the enemy challenge something if it wasn't true? All the enemy would have to do is just let you sit back and keep on waiting for something that wasn't going to happen. 
So do not allow the enemy to pull the wool over your eyes. I won't ramble on, but do not give up on what you know the Lord has promised you. Do not give up on what the Lord has already given to you. A lot of times we like to say that no weapon forms against us will prosper. But one of the things I've been saying recently to the Lord is no weapon formed against you will prosper. Because when the enemy attacks us, he's using us as a proxy to attack the Lord. So knowing that no weapon formed against the Lord will prosper. And if he's made a promise, he is going to bring it to pass. That is a part of his responsibility to bring it to pass. Stay faithful, stay prayerful, and do not allow the enemy to come and snatch what the Lord has given to you and or promised you. God bless you. Thank you.